Hi, uh, in this particular clipping let us try and understand what a rigid body is, how do we determine the degrees of freedom of a rigid body. Before going into details let us just look at how do we describe the motion of a particular body okay. I have this watch over here, it has a strap, I am just going to remove it for you to get an idea. If I look at this, this watch has a motion that I can describe. In addition it can also be very flexible or in other words each point of this body can move relative to each other okay. We call this as a flexible body. On the other hand supposing I take a body like this and I want to describe the motion of this body, okay. let us say it is moving like this. If you look at it the what whatever the be the kind of force that we apply on this reasonable you do not see that much of deflection that much of mo motion between the points of the body okay and for all practical purposes I can define this body as a body whose lens remain intact while in motion okay or in other words we call such a body as a rigid body alright. So in this exercise we will just look at only the rigid bodies okay. Now, the rigid body can move like this, can move upward, it can move towards me or away from me, it can ro rotate about an axis which is pointing towards you, it can rotate in the about the horizontal axis and it can rotate about the vertical axis okay. So there are three translations and three rotations possible possible in a general rigid body all right in order to make understanding clear let's just reduce that to a body that has lesser number of ways of motion for example if i take this board and a body on this board attached to this board okay and if I want to describe this body let us say it is a rigid body there are three ways in which it can move it can move horizontally like this it can move vertically like this or it can rotate about an axis all right. So in a planar rigid body I can expect two translations and a single rotation okay. One of the important points to uh, note here is if I have to describe the vertical motion okay that is completely independent of what is happening in the horizontal motion okay. For example, if it is going like a wave and if I have to describe only the vertical motion, it in no way affects the horizontal motion or in other words the two translations that I describe are independent of each other okay. So I am going to add one more uh, term over here, two independent translations and an independent rotation okay. This word independent is a very important addition to it okay. So in all it is possible to have three, three quantities which are independent 
that can describe the motion of a rigid body like this all right. So, we call this as 3 degrees of freedom are you with me. So, in general what we say is for a planar rigid body okay there are 3 degrees of freedom possible okay. So, if I have to draw a body here as I described there, there is a possibility of motion in this direction okay. So, let me just use horizontal and vertical directions as two independent quantities let me call this as x and this as y. So, the displacement in the x direction let me call as say u and the displacement in the y direction as v and there is a rotation possible let us say theta okay. So, I am going to just say rotation theta all right. So, there are three degrees of freedom that I can use <coughs> one is a translation u one is a translation v and a rotation theta okay. Given these three values I can tell you the position of this particular body that I have okay. What are the other important things I have to have a particular frame that I define for what is 0 displacement in x direction, what is 0 displacement in y direction and what is 0 rotation that we have defined here okay. So, we can say we have an origin which specifies 0 displacement and, uh, in x and y directions and <coughs> the horizontal axis can be taken as a reference axis okay. So, if I have the body here and if I draw these axis on it okay uh, and let us say it gets attached to this. So, let me call this as O I take this and I attach it over here and then start to define the displacement in horizontal direction and vertical direction and its rotation it is possible to describe the motion of this planar body on this board completely okay. This basically tells us that if I have a planar rigid body I should expect a maximum of 3 degrees of freedom. Let me explain a little bit more. So, let us say this is the rigid body that I am looking at this is a planar rigid body and it, it can move anywhere like this it can also rotate okay as we have already talked about it earlier okay. So, let me just take a point here okay mark it as say A okay. Now, if I fix this with a pin how many degrees of freedom will it have? If you look at it the only way that I can move this body is by rotating it okay forget about the planar motion it is only the horizontal motion that to a rotation that is possible okay. So, one way of describing any point on this rigid body is with respect to this particular point A mind you with respect to this particular point A I can define the motion of any other part point on the body by simply knowing the amount of rotation it has undergone with respect to an axis okay. If this is an axis how much rotation it has undergone all right. Every point will have undergone the same rotation which is an important idea to remember. Okay. The other distance that that you have to take care of in order to know how much motion has occurred is a fixed point it the distance between that point and let us say another point that I choose over here does not change during this particular motion okay. or in other words if I fix a point on the rigid body the only way that it can move is by rotating which means it reduces to one single degree of freedom that I have to define in order to understand the motion of this rigid body okay and mind you this is all with respect to a point that I have fixed. Now supposing I let this particular point move around okay I am just going to do it like this if I let this particular point move around and then also rotate about this. Since I have already defined the rotation of this particular body with respect to A okay the additional degrees of freedom come about uh, 
by looking at the motion of this point A okay all right how many degrees of freedom are possible two degrees of freedom are possible for this particular point A to move around this we already know because a particle has two degrees of freedom one in one x axis the other along the y axis all right. Once we have this concept right we will move on to the systems of rigid bodies so that we get an understanding of how to define the degrees of freedom. This is very essential before we go on to understanding how to write the equations of motion to solve the problem. Thank you. Thank you.